They know uranium is underneath the ground. There's an estimate that there's $500 million worth of uranium just, just in the Edgemont area. But as often, we sometimes think, well, gee, that doesn't affect me until we get a check in the mail and they want to drill right over there at the base of that hill where our water supply is. And, you know, we start screaming and hollering, no, 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 we don't want you on this property. And then we learned that when the Black Hills were taken, was taken from the Native Americans, that the, the, BL, the Bureau of Land Management, the federal government retained the mineral rights. And we as private landowners have no right to say yes or no. It's not going to be up to us to say yes or no. We have to go to the nuclear regulatory committees and, and show our support against it. We don't have a vote. They don't ask us. They can just come into your land and start mining without your permission because it is part of, part of the mineral rights that was retained. And that doesn't just affect us here on the Black Hills Wild Horse Sanctuary. It affects everybody in the Black Hills. I think it's important for people to, to immediately associate the word uranium with water. Uh, all the things you never think about water. Uh, one, it's easy to forget many things about water, like that it has a smell, like that it sounds like beautiful music when it's pouring into itself. But you can almost feel it in the air when it's nearby. We're reminded of all those things when we don't have it. Uh, so the fact that the, the very water underlying this region, not in one area, the whole region, when you're talking about uranium mining in an aquifer, that means you're threatening all the groundwater. And there's a lot of science, so-called science, that says, well, this can be contained and uh, we can clean it up. It's, it's in an underground sealed aquifer. But all of that science is for sale. There's a lot of science that says it's very safe to drill for oil on the floor of the Gulf of Mexico. But that science is for sale too. It's, science makes mistakes. And when you're playing with the very life of a region, and that's what the groundwater is for this arid region. We're fortunate to have a very wet year this year and there's a lot of green grass. But this area needs its groundwater. And so uranium mining stirs up poison in the groundwater. And a, and a mistake in the ground uh, involving uranium and an aquifer is absolutely catastrophic. Uh, what we're seeing in the Gulf of Mexico is terrible and it will take decades to clean up, if at all. Were there to be an accident with uranium mining in an aquifer, we're talking about poisonous chemicals that have a half-life of millions of years. This region would be gone from human, develop human habitation, period. Uh, many of the byproducts of uranium mining, to include uranium, have half-lives uh, longer than human beings have been on the planet. So when you see uranium, equate water, a real and immediate threat to the water. Uh, so whatever potential value may come from uranium mining, whether it's uh, the thought of jobs, or the thought of stock market increase, or the thought of cheap electricity. None of that is worth the risk to the very source of life in this part of the world. But once that water's gone, there's no way you can clean those aquifers. Uh, it's a Canadian company interested now. The money will go to Canada. The uranium will go to China and India. And maybe it'll come back to us before we know it. So people, please don't be apathetic about what's happening because it's very serious. You cannot eject water down through the aquifer into the uranium deposits and pump it back out again, pump the residue back in the aquifer and not pollute everybody's well. And you can't avoid polluting the Cheyenne River and a lot of us live on that Cheyenne. And we better be worried, worried about what's gonna to happen to our cattle and where our kids can go skinny dipping because it's going to affect an awful lot of people, not only here, 
but all through the back hills and all across the plains. Because nobody knows just exactly where those aqueducts go. The black hills are fractured by ge ge geologic uh, occasions where one aquifer sometimes flows into another. They, you don't have to have control over what's down below. So take this seriously and, and uh, get together with your neighbors and help any way we can to help keep this resor wonderful resource in the Black Hills uh, safe. We don't want to become the leukemia capital of the world. 85% of us that have cancer are exposed to the uranium from the bombing area and in the waters. Our lives are precious and we need to live it the fullest because we have two paths to walk. One is humanity and one is the sacred life. We are here for a reason, for a sacred purpose. I think what threatens the wild horse sanctuary most right now is the increased threat of uranium mining and the perceived value of uranium. Uh, much of this land uh, has uranium underlying it. Uh, and that it's seen as a, uh, a material resource rather than something that should be left in the ground. Uh, the consumptive need of energy uh, and more important profit because most of the uranium mining proposed in the Black Hills region right now is all profit driven. This uranium isn't going to potentially fuel US based nuclear reactors. It's being mined by a, a Canadian or French company to be sold on the international market, largely in China or in India, uh, to produce new reactors. So we're not talking about some kind of strategic natural resource. We're talking about profit. We're not really even talking about domestic profit. We're talking about multinational corporations. The way these companies are viewing the uranium here is no different than a multinational might look at a resource in, say, Tanzania or uh, another part of the world. It's just a resource. The people here are just on top of the resource. It's all about profit, but that's a very real uh, and credible threat to this entire region.